thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, first want to congratulate and thank the Chairman of the Energy and Water Subcommittee uh, for setting as a priority, uh, making sure that our waterways, especially the Mississippi River, are restored after the devastating floods that we experienced throughout our country. It wasn't just in a few states, it was throughout many parts of the Midwest, the South, uh, other parts of our country that not only experienced tornado damage, uh, experienced uh, unprecedented flooding going back to 1927, uh, but now if you look at where we are and you look at what is being done here, uh, this is not money that's adding to the deficit. We're at a point right now as we face this debt ceiling uh, and there is a there is a divide in Congress. There's a divide in Washington. And the question is, are we going to start living within our means and truly setting priorities in this country or just continue going down this spending binge, acting as if nobody's going to pay the tab? And of course, I think what the chairman has done uh, what the full chairman of appropriations and so many other members of this new majority have said is uh, that game's over. The game of spending money we don't have is over and we've got to make the tough choices of setting priorities in this country. And so if you look at the, some of the money that was moved over from high-speed rail, and there were billions of dollars set aside in the stimulus bill that was such a failed disaster, over $787 billion of money that we don't have with the promise that unemployment wouldn't go over 8 percent, it's very clear that that failed. But what we're saying is, let's take some of that money and move it over into something that's much more important right now, getting our economy back on track, getting people back on track, getting their families back together. And if you look at what happened on the Mississippi River, uh, just a few weeks ago I flew over uh, the Morganza Spillway and looked at the Atchafalaya Basin, where some of that flooding happened, where you literally had people who, had, who were in harm's way and their areas were flooded to keep other people from flooding. And it was one of those terrible choices no one has to want, want, wants to have to make, but those families were put in that situation and their communities were flooded so other communities wouldn't. If you looked at the extra silt that came down the Mississippi River that now threatens to impede the ability for us to move commerce through 30 plus states of this country so that we can get those exports, so that we can create more jobs and be able to be competitive with these foreign countries. Because if you're a farmer, uh, in Iowa, if you're, if you're trying to, to move commerce in Missouri down the Mississippi River, if you don't have the ability now because we're not able to dredge the river, all of a sudden now Brazil's going to get that contract for that, that product because you can't, com you can't be competitive anymore. Uh, not only are we talking about tens of thousands of jobs, but we're talking about priorities. If you look at the high-speed rail projects, many states have turned the money down. Why? because they realize it's a money loser. They lose money on the deal because it just doesn't pay for itself. Of course, states have balanced budgets. Most of those states have to balance their budget every year, so they can't just take what looks like free money uh, to, to go and engage in a pro process that's ultimately going to cost them money every year that they don't have. But because they have to balance their budget, many of them have turned that money away. And so you look here in Washington, there is no balanced budget requirement. Frankly, it shows you one of the reasons why we need a balanced budget amendment to our Constitution so that we're forced to live within our means too. So we, can, we can't just keep spending money as if there is no consequence, because there is consequence. Our children, our children are counting on us to make those responsible decisions, to set the priorities, to not just tell everybody that comes in the door, you got an idea, here's some money. You got an idea, here's some money. Nobody has the money, they'll just go print it, raise the debt ceiling, and, and just keep giving it as if it's, it's not going to have an effect at some point. It has a real effect. It has a real impact. And so we've got to make the tough choices and set the priorities. And so there was devastating flooding throughout our country. You had so many states that saw tornado damage, flooding damage. And they're trying to get back on their feet. And then there's this high-speed rail money. And so much of the money in the stimulus bill that went to waste, that was squandered, that we have nothing to show for, the promises of no more than 8% unemployment, that didn't work. It was a failure, and everybody recognizes it. And so we're saying we're going to make those tough choices. None of these choices are easy. But we didn't come up here to make easy choices. We came up here because we've got to set the priorities of this country. And that means balancing our budget and not just saying everything can get all the funding at once. If something's a priority, then that means we've got to find the money somewhere else. And so that's what's being done here. And that's why I commend the chairman for making that tough decision. And yes, we're going to have to, I guess, have a fight over this. We're going to have to have a discussion over this, as we should. This is the people's house. But that's what this discussion is about. It's about setting our priorities 
and shifting the old way of doing business of just spending more money we don't have and, and every idea that sounded good, you know, you just keep doing it. We can't keep doing that. And so that's why I support what the chairman's doing and I yield back the balance Gentleman's of my time, time Madam Chair. For what purpose is the gentleman